How would you go about fluffing this offense? If you had to pass a note along to Kyle, even though you're just some novice Yahoo sitting on your couch watching football, never coaching football, but you've watched enough of it to have an idea or two that you think could actually help an NFL head coach, (laughs) what would that idea be? Like, you can have any idea for Kyle Shanahan. What would it be? 888-957-9570. Raise, I'm sure yours would be, don't listen to callers from sports talk radio shows. Oh, if he's listening to to any show, whether it's it's this one or any other. It's ours. If he's listening to any of them, he's not doing his job. But we make nice background noise. Not not really. I mean, not for him. I mean, personally, I think I'm if, worth paying attention to. If if he's if he again, <laughs> he should have better things to do. He should. But since you've asked, they were fairly diversified in the first half last week. They got 20 touches to their three best guys, or t- touches or targets. I think once they start to protect the lead, that was the second half, you started them trying to run Wilson more. And maybe the lead wasn't big enough because, first of all, fumble in the first series. Second series is a safety. Uh, third series is a punt. Fourth series is a field goal, but you know doesn't really put Denver out of reach. And then they give up the touchdown right after that. So maybe if you're trying to say, what are you going to do to juice up the offense, run it like it's the first half. Because the first half, guys were getting the ball in proportion to their importance to the offense. Didn't happen in the second half, but in fairness, even there, they had the ball for only 22 plays after halftime and only 10 minutes. It was surprising, because I agree with you. They turn to their running game when Kyle gets ultra-conservative. Yet at the same time, would they only have 19 rushes in that game? It was, it was oh, just a, the stats coming out of that box score are a little weird. There's just no doubt about it. It was a weird night in Denver all the way around. And hopefully all the weird that you can fit into the first three weeks of a football season is officially now behind this team. But, yeah, play to your strengths. Like, keep on going to the play that works until they take it away from you. Now, I'm sure Denver, you know, they get paid to play defense, too. And I'm sure they took away some elements of, well, we're taking away Debo here in the passing game. Or we're going to take Kittle away just right at the line of scrimmage. We're going to wipe him out and just make sure he's not getting anything that even resembles a clean release. And we're just going to make his night miserable. Doesn't even really get out of his three-point stance. And then you also had Kittle probably staying back only because of the Trent Williams injury alone. So that probably took him a little bit out of the offense. But now there's Brandon Ayuk. And this would have been an opportunity to maybe get Danny Gray in there. I mean, how many four wide receiver sets have we seen from this team? Not many. Not many. So maybe a little diversity in the schemes you're showing other teams and then just keep on running what is working for you until they make you play left-handed. This is Chris in Fairfield. Chris, appreciate your call this afternoon. You got an idea for Kyle Shanahan? Yeah, you kind of stole my thunder a little bit. Um, I kind of, uh, I, I, you know, there was a, I would like to see defenses figure out a way to play us when we go into trips formation. I would love to see Debo, IU, and Kittle on the right and Gray all the way to the left. I would love to see how that got defended by, by defenses. We do great in between the tackles, but I don't believe we do enough trips. And the one time we did something similar to trips, it was so foreign to Jimmy. He never saw Debo wide open down the sideline. I believe that could be open a lot. When you have Kittle, who's such a great blocker, in the trip scheme, gosh, we watch McVeigh and so many other people do so much in the trips formation. I just think that, gosh, why not throw a few of those throughout – throughout the game, maybe five or six. And he is smart enough that he can scheme up that trip. I would love to see Kittle and Ayuk and Debo on one side, Gray on the other going deep. I just think that could work. And it's quick, and you get it out, and you get your screens. I, I just I don't see any of that. And that's what you were talking about with your four wides. I, I just would like to see three on one, one on the left. I'll tell you, Chris, nobody robbed you of your thunder. That was a hell of a call. Very good call. Thank you so much. And I, I, I agree and what I like out of that trips formation, instead of just me saying four wide across, you know what Kyle really is good at? I mean, since we spent so much of this season so far telling you what Kyle isn't or not good at, you know what he's great at? 
He's great at disguising the illegal play as a legal play. He's great at running picks off of players six yards downfield, even though it's illegal after you get past five. He's great at running picks off officials who got heavy feet. He's great at using what's on the football field to spring other guys open on the football field. And sometimes he knows he's flirting with the rule book. It's like a Zaza Pachulia. I've never seen anyone set a moving screen better than that guy. Kyle's great at setting illegal and moving screens and getting away with them. That's how guys do pop so open. See, I don't think any of these concepts are foreign to Kyle Shanahan. What I wonder, though, is does he think he can block those for those? And I have my I have my doubts. I don't know that he's got a ton of confidence in his offensive line to pass block the extra half second to a second that it takes for a for a play with trips to, to come open. I, I I mean I don't know the answer to that. But I think part of why Kyle's off uh, Shanahan's offense is not as exotic as others is that his offensive line isn't very good. And bad offensive lines tend not to be able to pass block more than run block. Run blocking is easier. And I'm if just, you can't pass block well, a lot of your exotics have to go by the way by the wayside. You can't have Kittle downfield if you need him in as part of your blocking scheme. It feels like a funny week to say this with no Trent Williams, but I don't think we can just chalk this up to well, you you gotta a subpar offensive line, and you need to conduct business as such. I actually think they've been they've they played beyond their expectations. I think they've been pretty good. So, again, if if he's scared to do that, that's not good because scared money don't make none. Not in sports, really, not anywhere. And I know that one of the things that I put out on Twitter that got some traction when I just said, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo and Kyle Shanahan really do complement each other in terms of their on-field cowardice. I'm not saying either one of those guys is a coward. My God, Jimmy's in more physical accidents every single week in a football, you know, just going through practice than I'll be in the rest of my life in terms of, like, any physical confrontation. These guys are grown-ass men. They're not cowards. But I just think that they're afraid to do things on a football field that seem to be standard or other teams try to do them no matter what no matter what to varying degrees you know i mean if you're the chicago bears the answer right now is don't ever throw the ball ever i don't know if you can do that yet i mean if kyle were the head coach of the chicago bears i don't know if they're throwing a single forward pass it might be like that bill belichick game in buffalo where he's he's throwing three passes or two passes whatever the hell it was um but but, then, but that's how you get predictable well but here's the other thing in the two games they lost this year, they threw the ball about 60% of the time. In the game they won, they ran the ball 67% of the time. And that's kind of a meaningful statistic because it bears out other wins and losses that they've had over the years. Is that they are much better when they are running at least as much, if not more, than they are throwing the ball. And that last year, that's three years ago which were their two best years. I mean, there may that may be a correlation as well. The more they throw, the worse it gets. Now you sound like Bo Schembechler. 888-957-9570. Oh, Bo's dead, not here to defend himself. <laughs> Carlos in San Bruno. Hello, Carlos. What's your idea to pass along to the coach? Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, I want more George Kittle. Uh, I want... Uh, Shanahan to revert back to 2018 and do whatever he did to make Nick Mullins help George Kittle break the se single season tight end record of, for receiving yards. Uh, so whatever that was, we need some more of that. Yeah, I, I, I say it almost every week. Hey, diddle, kid, hey, diddle, diddle, where's some more George Kittle? Um, he's too electric of a player with the ball in his hand to not get the ball in his hands. And I know Kyle loves him as a run blocker, and I do too. Everyone does. But let's say Travis Kelsey was as good of a run blocker as George Kittle is. Do you think Andy Reid's turning him into a blocking tight end? No chance. I mean, how about George Kittle line up in a, you know, 
a Y wide receiver position? How 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 about getting him out where receivers line? How about you got George Kittle lining up against a cornerback? Does any cornerback want to see that coming down the field at him five yards at a time? 888-957-9570. Rich in San Mateo. What's your idea, Rich? Hey, guys. Um, I, you know... I think my central thing for Kyle, and he is a very, very innovative coach and has a lot of great ideas, but what always rubs my nose the wrong way is that he, he forgets to use the weapons that he has. Like everybody, you know, you, you guys have pointed out, other callers have, of oh, Kittle. You've got to use Kittle more. But another guy that is so underutilized is Kyle Jusick. I mean, look at that incredible catch, the one catch that he had in the last game. And he's got tremendous hands and is a great short yardage and goal line runner. It's like the way the Niners used to use the fullback back when Tom Rathman was on with the team in, in the, uh, the, the, the glory days. You know, when they won the Super Bowl back to back in 88 and 89, in 1989, Jerry Rice was the leading receiver on the team with, uh, 89 passes. Number two receiver on the team was Tom Rathman with 72 passes from the fullback position. It's like, you know, they say there's a fine line between genius and madness, and it's like Kyle loses his mind, you know? You've got to use the guys that you have and the talent that you have and and get everybody involved, right? Well, yeah. I I mean, Rich, uh, I didn't think I would be agreeing with the more fullback, but yeah, I do. I do. I mean, I, I think he's one of the single best football players on this team. I think he is the best fullback in the NFL. And since that's a lever that you can pull, you should probably pull it a little bit more. Now, if you're saving, you know, Kyle use check for a rainy day, well, okay. You know, at one and two, hosting the Rams on a Monday night game, that feels a little rainy to me. Conceptually, not actually. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, Here's the thing. More Debo. In the passing game, maybe a little less Debo as a running back, more Kittle in the passing game, not as a blocking tight end, more Brandon Ayuk. Give me some Danny Gray and George Kittle, or excuse me, Kyle Uzcheck should get six touches a game, five six touches a game. That nah, feels like a lot, and it is a lot, but no one would see it coming. <laughs> I'll tell you that. No one would see them coming. No no one would see, oh, this is the Kyle Juszczyk game until it was actually happening. And by that time, you might be down a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, I again, I don't know that you can pre-program touches. Because I think what we saw on Sunday night was an offense that, while it didn't score a lot of points, it moved up and down the field pretty well. In the second half, they didn't have the ball at all. So that was problem one. And the second problem was Kyle Shanahan was trying to protect a lead that was too small. And maybe that's the problem with the offense is that it doesn't convert its possessions. You know, going into halftime, you know, with 10, you know, with seven, you know, clearly not enough. And... It wasn't like the offense wasn't dynamic. I mean, they were, Garoppolo was getting throws off. Uh, they were running the ball plenty. Uh, but the second half, it all stopped because, among other things, the game changed. Denver had the ball for 20 minutes. Four Niners had... Second half. Yeah. Just second half. Just the second half. They had the ball 35 for the game, which is, which is also a lot. But 20 minutes in the second half, I mean, I don't know what offense you can establish. Well, and what's amazing about that is that the 49ers just forced their most punts in a football game in six, seven years. It's been a really, really long time since they were just that much three and out, three and out. Here we go. Yeah. 49ers defense forced its most punts in a single game in six years. The defense even got to Russell Wilson four times. So you force eight three and outs. Denver has very little going for it offensively, yet they dominate you in the second half, time of possession. 
Like, how, how's that even happen? You know, it was a weird game. It was a really weird game. Yeah, they're seeming to starting to master that. This is Matt in Novato. Thank you for the call, Matt. You're on 95.7 The Game with Damon and Ratto, brought to you by uh, BMW Fairfield. What's going on? Yeah, guys, I was calling because one issue I've had the last few weeks on top of, you know, what you guys have been talking about, I think, comes down to, you know, the, the overuse. Rather than using all these amazing pieces we have to confuse teams and make it difficult to scheme for us, Kyle seems to use all these, you know, studs that we have, kind of like disposable matches. Oh, I'm going to run trade till he's hurt or I can't. Then we saw on Monday night, he's basically doing the same thing to Debo, and then he got scared away from it when Debo went down. Then you had Trent getting double teamed and didn't give him any help, which essentially leads to him getting hurt. And I'm just worried that he, he keeps doing this. And then on top of it, the leadership of the team, how is it that Kyle never seems to come after the game and take ownership of anything unless it's coming to Jimmy's aid? You know, Monday night or uh, against the Bears, the only guy who stepped up and said, this is, this is on me, was Trey. The rookie comes up and says, I got to do better. I can spot numerous places where I could have done more. And then, you know, when Jimmy comes in with a lead against Seattle, he's at the podium saying it's like riding the bike, and Kyle's joking, oh, he's still handsome. And then come next week, Jimmy says, oh, it's like my first game, and Kyle says he put him in a weird position. A weird position, the, the football field's been the same length and shape for as long as the game's been going on, and he walked out the back of the end zone. I mean, it, it's just embarrassing. At what point do these guys step up, and if Jimmy thinks he's the guy and Kyle's going to put his trust in him, well, you got to own it when it's bad, not just when it's good. But, yeah, I mean, I don't get the point of having more guys in the top 100 than any other team and then just using them one by one until they drop like flies. How about spreading it around and being confusing? Because I don't know any team in the league that could be seeing the Niners on the schedule, even with all the pieces we have, being afraid. I think that Harbaugh-era team, it was scary to face that defense. It was scary to face that Kaepernick in his prime when all things were firing. And now... Everybody pretty much just schemes that, hey, if we can score a touchdown or a touchdown and a field goal, the Niners can't go get those points no matter what the defense does. And I'm just waiting for this team to be intimidating on any level with the names that we have on it. It's just crazy that we're not, we're not more daunting on the schedule. Matt, good call. I think the Niners do scare teams defensively. Offensively, elements might scare other teams and coaches. But you're right, not enough of it. And I think maybe the best point that you made in your phone call was that Kyle does burn guys out. It's weird. I mean, I began the segment saying you got to keep on returning to your guys when you know something's working. Yet at the same time, you are right. He will, I mean, if Debo got two carries in that first quarter that worked well, he's going to get three more carries in the second quarter. This is where we were saying, you know, you are overusing Trey Lance. And you can you can defend Kyle on that and we can have Kyle use check come on in and maybe use the wrong mathematical parable to explain it away. But yeah, I mean that that resonates with me a little bit. It does feel like there is an element of just predictability. Like Who's coming out hot in the first quarter? There is no doubt that Kyle is going to ride that guy into the ground until you know it's coming. I'm I'm still trying to get my head around what I think is the most pernicious problem along these lines, which is that he I think he's just too easy or e- eager to get into protect the lead mode. Because, again, you saw what he can do when he feels free and easy in terms of play calling, in terms of distributing the ball. So it's not like he doesn't know how. But I think they don't get enough points for him to get into protect mode yet. You need you need a two-touchdown lead, minimum. And they didn't have that in either of the two losses. And in the in the game where they did have a significant lead, then you can pound like crazy. I think I think that's the bigger problem more than he runs guys into the ground. It's that he wants to go to his bellwether guy when a game is too close. And it 
maybe he's just got to be more freewheeling. It would certainly answer the one question that he had before, which was, we're kind of predictable. Well, you're part of the reason. Yeah, no, there's, there's, there's no doubt.